Hi everybody, I'm Emily, one of the designers with The Quilted Cow, and today I'm super excited to bring to you the latest in our back home pillow accessories. This is the pumpkin pie accessory. It is the, the accessory that we are doing for September, and I'm really excited to bring this to you and show you how to make this today. First though, let's thank our sponsors. We are sponsored by Creative Grids, Cutters, Mats and Rulers, and also Viking Husqvarna Machines. Let's get started. So these accessories for the Back Home Pillow series are super cute and super awesome. They are interchangeable. So the first thing, if you don't have it already, is you wanna go and grab yourself the Back Home Pillow kit and or pattern. This is a helpful heifer. So the kit is gonna include everything that you need to make a quilted pillow cover also the finger snaps that you're going to need and the pattern that you need to to follow to make this we also have a video on this uh, we will put a link of link to it in the description box below so head on over there watch that figure out how to make this pillow make the pillow cover it does have an envelope enclosure so that you can change it out if you need to and it is a really nice pillow and then each month we do a different accessory all right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out all of your, your parts and pieces for this. There's quite a few parts and pieces, but don't worry, they'll go together and they'll go together pretty well. Um, while you're cutting them out though, I do want to make sure that you know that you will want to mark the letter, the coordinating letter on, either write it on the backside of the fabric or um, use your, your ABC123 pins that you can, you can use to mark that. I was just looking for them here and I'm not seeing them in, oh, there they are. These ABC123 pins are super handy. They've got the letter on them or a number. And so then you can put this in all of your C pieces. You can just pin them all together so you know which one is the C and go through your alphabet like that. So grab yourself one of these if you don't already have it and you wanna use that but make sure that you mark it with the coordinating letter of the fabric that's listed on the pattern. Once you have everything cut out, the instructions are gonna tell you to go ahead and draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of certain squares. So grab all of those squares, draw your diagonal line, and then once you get those marked, the instructions are gonna tell you that you need to take each one of those squares and place it right sides together with the coordinating fabric that it tells you to put it on. But once you get these sewn on, you're going to trim it a quarter of an inch away. So go ahead and do all your snowball corners, all your flippy corners first, and then lay everything out and we'll start to put everything together. So let me go ahead. I'm going to sew down this line and then I'm going to trim it and press it. And I'll bring this back to you and show you what this looks like. Give me just one moment. Okay. So, I have just now completed the top of the A, the letter A that you'll see right here. I just completed the top there. And so that was just snowballing those two corners or doing the flippy corners, whatever you wanna call it. Um, one of the things that I forgot to remind you is that while you're sewing these, if you wanted to chain stitch them, that's great. That's what I usually do whenever I'm doing all of these snowball corners all at once. I'll chain stitch them, lay them back where they need to go. So I've gone ahead and I've done all my flippy corners on all of my pieces. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and sew together the top row of the pie crust. All right, so I have the pie rectangle put together. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and it's kind of like snowballing, but I'm using rectangles to snowball the corners of this to make it into a triangle. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your fabric E pieces and you're going to mark a line, a diagonal line, from the top right corner to the bottom left corner on one of them, and then from the top left corner to the bottom right corner on the other. So make sure that they are opposite directions on here. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna line this up, and this piece is two and a half inches wide. So you're gonna line this up with the top, the first piece on the left of your pie, of your pie piece, so it's gonna be the top right corner to the bottom left corner for this one. You're gonna line up that top right corner with the top left corner of your pie rectangle. And then two and a half inches over from this bottom corner, 
will be where that lines up. Now, an easy way to do this without having to measure it is once you get that corner lined up, that top left corner, or you know the top corner of your pie lined up, this piece here, this line right here, this corner, is gonna line up where it needs to line up on the bottom of this piece. All right, so I have the pie triangle put together, and then I'm just gonna add these border pieces on each side, and then it'll be time to sew the crust onto the pie itself. So let me get these side pieces onto the pie triangle, and I'll be back to show you how to line up the crust with the pie. Okay, so now I have my pie put together with the little border pieces on, and then you may notice whenever you are lining this up that your crust piece might be a little bit wide. So these two little border pieces on the edges of the crust piece, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you kind of forget about lining those up with the edges of this. It'll all fit together, it'll be okay. What I want you to do though is I want you to try to line up the quarter inch down here line on the pie with where it's gonna line up on the crust so that whenever you sew this on that, you're gonna line up your quarter inch seam allowance on this side and, and on this so that your crust then is gonna line up with the edge of the pie. So now that I have my crust on my pie, and you'll notice, like I said, these two little border pieces on the crust, they're kind of overhanging. I'm okay with that because the edge of the crust is lined up with the edge of my pie, and that's really the more important aspect of that one. So we're gonna set this to the side for just a few moments, and we're gonna start putting together our letters, the F, A, L, and L. You'll notice I've got one of the L's put together. So each one, is put together in different segments. So you'll notice that I started with the F and I put together these two pieces, those two pieces. Now I'm gonna put all three of these pieces together and put the, the side of the F on top of that. Whenever I did the A, I've got these three pieces put together. I've got the top of the A. I need to put the sides of the A onto these three pieces and then I'm gonna put the top on top of that. And then for the L's, you take those two pieces put the stem of the L on to the bottom of that one, and then you put the side of the L on that, and you'll make that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put all of my letters together, and when I'll show you what that looks like whenever I get back, and then we can go ahead and get the word all put together, and I'll show, and we'll get that done. So let me get my letters put together, and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my letters all put together, and I've got my background strips that are in between all the letters where they need to go. Now I do wanna point out a couple of things that I haven't mentioned it yet, but you do wanna make sure that you are doing as accurate as possible of a quarter inch seam allowance. If your seam allowance is a little bit shy, then you're gonna find that your pieces don't always line up. If it's a little bit wide, then unfortunately your pieces are not gonna line up very well either. So be as accurate as possible with your quarter inch seam allowance. You may notice on this one where you have like two seams that are going together and my A, that, that background, background rectangle of the A, it kind of sticks down a little bit. What you're gonna do is you're gonna line up with the top of the A and not worry about that. So just line it up and be as even as possible whenever you're, whenever you're putting these together. If they're a little bit off, if your seam allowance was a little bit, a little bit short, then you might have a little extra background that needs to, needs to just hang out there at the bottom and that's okay. Don't stress about it. If you do stress about it and wanna go ahead and take it apart, I understand, but don't worry about it because that'll be caught whenever we put all this together, we're gonna to use the bottom line of the A as our, as our the baseline. All right, so this is what the, the F-A-L-L, what the letters look like when they're all put together. So now that we've got that all put together, it's time to do the rolling pin. Now for the rolling pin, we've got the little handles for the rolling pin that we did the, the snowballed corners on. So we snowballed the corners on the left side of this one and on the right side of this one. I've gone ahead and sewn the background rectangles to the top and bottom of this handle. I just wanted to show you what that looked like before I sewed the background rectangles to that. So let me get those background rectangles sewn on here and then I'm gonna sew both of the handles to the end of the rolling pin. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like when I get back. All right, so I've got my rolling pin put together. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this background rectangle to the rolling pin and also to the letters. Once I've got that done, then I'm gonna attach this background rectangle to the side of that. So let me go ahead and get these three attached and then I'll press all that and then I'll get this one attached and I'll show you what this looks like whenever I get that done. All right, so I have my 
letters and rolling pin section together and I have my pie section together. So now I'm just going to attach the pie to the letters and then I'm going to attach the top and bottom border pieces onto that. So we're in the home stretch here with finishing out this accessory. Let me show you what this is going to look like once I get it all put together. All right, so I have the accessory top all put together. It is ready now to put the interfacing on the back side of the top and then put the back I'm sorry, the backing fabric on there, sew all the way around, get it all get it all finished out. So, let me show you on this. So I've got it all pressed out and then at this point, you can either go ahead and trim this to six and a half by 15 and a half, or if you take your, your interfacing fabric, trim that to six and a half by 15 and a half, you're going to press that to the back side, to the wrong side of your accessory. Do not, whatever you do, do not press it to the right side, press it to the wrong side. The bumpy parts of this is going to go onto the back side or the wrong side of your accessory. And then you're going to take your accessory, lay it right side up, put your backing fabric on top of that, line that up. And then I'm going to clip this together because I like to clip more than I like to pin. So I'm just going to put a couple clips along the top here and a couple clips on the bottom and one on each side just to make sure that everything just kind of holds in place while I'm sewing all the way around this. Now, I'm going to start about here whenever I sew around, work my way all the way around and then end about here so that I have about a three inch opening that I can turn this right side out with. So make sure that you don't sew all the way around this time. So let me get that sewn and I'll show you what that looks like when I get back. All right. So I sew that all the way around. I've left myself a little bit of thread tail. That way, whenever I turn it right side out, if the threads start kind of pulling out, then I can always pull those and, and tighten it back up. But I've also gone ahead and backstitched at the beginning and end of my start and stop. So take care of that. That'll be good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip my corners. You want to clip close to where those threads cross. You don't want to cut through the threads in those corners. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and sew them again. You just want to get rid of some of the bulk in that corner so that whenever you do turn it right side out, you'll get a nice crisp corner or a sharper corner than you would if you didn't do this. So I'm just going to go around and clip all my corners. And now I'm going to turn it right side out and smooth out, poke out my corners and smooth everything out and then give it a good press. Once I get that done, then I'm going to take it back over to the machine and I'm going to top stitch all the way around the outside of this. And that's going to close this opening that I'm turning this right side out in. So give me just a few moments. I'm going to get that done. I'm going to turn this right side out, get it pressed and top stitched. And I'll show you what that looks like when I get back. All right. So I'll let you know, I did use a stiletto to go ahead and poke out my corners and get them as, as square as possible. And now it's time to install finger snaps. Once again, this is the pumpkin pie accessory. It's part of the Back Home Pillow series. The kit, you can find those on our website and the kit will include all the fabric that you need to make this. It'll include the backing fabric, everything for the front, the interfacing, the finger snaps, and it will include the pattern in the kit. If you don't already have it, grab yourself the back home pillow as well. You can also get the postcard patterns separately if you want to get those. And those are available on our website as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep bringing you this content. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Okay, you wicked cool quilters, good job. You made it to the end. We would like to thank our sponsors, Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machines, Creative Grids, Rulers, Rotary Cutters, and Mats, and Wilmington Prints for the beautiful fabrics. Thanks for watching.